Father, we stay in the flow of what you want to do here and only what you want to do. So make us come alive to you and die off to the world. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to see you guys again. Amen. I mean, it's been, yeah, we just, uh, I appreciate your prayers. Um, you know, New Year's, coming up to New Year's Eve, right? I had that fever and quick fear that might be COVID. It wasn't, but as Tim <laughs> texted, you know, it was the first time you ever said, praise God, I've got the flu. <laughs> Because like the alternative was just not really good. So I've gotten over that, but I just, uh, since there's sort of, I can't remember last time I ever had the flu and it just kind of took my legs out. So, um, was struggling this week, but I felt like with everything going on, we had to meet, um, regardless of, you know, what God was able to put together in my diminished capacity or not. It was important that we gather and we hear each other, right? Faith comes by yeah, you know, and we need the fellowship uh, to connect and kindle each other up. And I think all the more so, right? All the more so in the craziness. The isolation issue with COVID is taking a lot of people out. Okay. And we know some that have been seriously taken out. Now, God's in the process of bringing them back. Okay. Because <laughs> he does that. He is the hound of heaven. But taking your stand in an upside down world, that kind of phrase came to me in terms of well, yesterday <laughs> in the evening. And it's like, oh my goodness, we have lost all, all center. And uh, then other things that were sent to me, including the prayer of a congressman who opened Congress and ended up saying a man and a woman. <laughs> oh no, really? Oh, okay, you know. You just kind of like, okay, God, we've just, we've lost uh, a, a lot of things, but I love this image. You know, the Lord always speaks so much to me through graphic images. And the fact that this person is taking a stand above the crazy, right? Above the clouds. And there's so much in that, um, that I feel we have to have during this time. Yeah. So let's just keep rolling forward. Um, now, if you missed it, I was doing it here just in an empty room, but on New Year's Eve, I gave probably the shortest word I've ever given. <laughs> People are like, yeah, man, I barely got warmed up. It was 20 minutes. That's what happens when you got a fever and the creativity is, is minimal. But we went into the fact that we are loading into this year, 2021, and we follow the biblical calendar, which is the year 5781. And I won't go into all that stuff and the prophetic triggers and everything else. Um, if you missed it, please watch that because that might help clue you in on some things. But even though we've transitioned into a new year in the Gregorian calendar, we're still in God's 10th biblical month. And I watch how that frames things, okay? I looked at the very day when we, we shifted into and the significance of that. But just a reminder, the 10th month called Tevet this is kind of a definition of the number 10 in scripture it portrays that time of judgment when many either receive reward or come under divine judgment. It's interesting. Okay. And we've crossed the new year in this 10th month. One way or another, the law must be fulfilled and divine order reestablished. It's a significant number. If God puts a 10 in front of you, you want to pay attention. Now, again, remember we talked about there's good and bad in all of that, right? There were 10 lepers. All 10 lepers were healed. Great news. Now, only one came back. There was an assessment. You can get your goods, but only one came back in relationship. There were 10 bridesmaids, right? 10 virgins. Everybody was invited. That was great. They were all there showing up, but only five make it into the doorway. So there's this assessment that goes on in the midst of that. And why did I watch what's going on now? I go, okay, God, how are you assessing things? And divine order has to be reestablished is, is from heaven's perspective, not necessarily down here. The crazy can continue, okay? And then 
We also looked because we, we know that God has aligned the months and the tribes, and the 10th tribe is the tribe of Dan. And one of my favorite things about Dan, Dan is a lion's cub springing out of Bashan, okay? And should you ever be surprised when things break open in this 10th biblical month? It's like there's something in there. And we've seen this because four years ago, it happened to be that the 10th month was when President Trump was inaugurated. And it was in that that I'd never even thought about it, that God made it very clear that he is a Samson. All right? Anointed of God, impulsive, passionate, angry, jealous, overreactive, dysfunctional, and vindictive. I'm sorry, that's Samson. That's your hero of the faith there, buddy. But I just want... <laughs> Four years, this has been such a comfort to me because when he went crazy and did stuff, I'm going like, okay, that's like Samson. And you know, Samson doesn't end well. Does it surprise you that even coming into post-election everything else and coming into this new year, Samson is very present. Okay, <laughs> all this stuff going on. And it's like, okay. So in the midst of what is incredibly chaotic, okay, how much is it felt a little chaotic out there? What's good? What are you doing, God? Everybody's getting their, okay, head turned around. What happened in the state of Georgia? It's like, oh my goodness. Okay. But there's this order that God begins to set in place. But what's interesting is as we focus on what God's doing in order, the chaos kind of gets blurry. Do you get this? And so in this year of 2021, it is a year of worship and warfare, okay? You're going to see that there's a huge need for worship. And as we've talked before about worship and warfare are two sides of the same coin, okay? Part of the currency that we, that we move in here is kingdom. But I want to just give you, I, I've done a lot more in terms of studying um, kind of prophetic triggers that are linked to this year. One of the things I'm fascinated, okay, you're, the year 21, Lord, is there some significance to that? And so you start studying the number 21. I won't go into all of it yet, but I, I do want to show you this. <clears throat> in Daniel 10 is one of the few places that the number 21 comes up three different times. But here's the specific thing. This is when the angel is sent to Daniel. Remember, Daniel has a vision, and so he starts to fast. How long does he fast? 21 days, right? Three, three weeks. And then during that time, finally, there's an appearance of this angel. And the angel finally says, The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. The number 21 is connected into this whole dialogue between Daniel and the angel and what goes down in there. And so one of the things I believe we will be seeing a lot in this year is the angelic host in conflict. Okay. I think we're watching manifestations of that now. <clears throat> but the need, therefore, to understand that there's stuff playing up here and where is our focus? Where is our eyesight? Where... Where are we established? So let me just connect in a few places. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Y'all good so far? I realize there's some new people here. They're probably going, what on earth is he talking about? Oh, well, it's okay. I'm just about two bubbles off center is all. I think it's more like three. Three? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> It's not the flu, it's just, it's just him, yeah. Well, because I have to jump into some stuff here pretty quickly. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Part of the challenge when we go through a season like we did and all the intercession and all the prayer and all the concerns about what's going on in the nation, and it's there's huge concerns, right? There's huge things that need to be corrected. There's injustices that have to be faced, okay? But again, it's always this, the pendulum tends to swing and go way over. But the idea is in the midst of this, we're supposed to seek the things that are above because we've been raised with Christ. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth, 
right? Most of the trauma that a lot of people are experiencing right now is because their eyes, their hearts, their emotions are all set on things of the earth. And we're going, oh no, what's now? The sky is falling. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. There's a really important thing. Say, I've died. I've died. <clears throat> Turn to the person next to you and said, you're a pretty good looking corpse. And now I understand what the smell is in this room, but is it... <laughs> you know, this is one of the key things. What, what do we need to die to? Because if things are getting stirred up in fears and everything else, there's usually something we haven't died to. Well, God, what if, what if, what if, what if, what about this? What if, and it's just like, you know, I thought you died and I thought your life was hidden with me. And I thought that I've already raised you up into the heavenlies. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Colossians 3, right? You all know that passage? Helpful. <clears throat> I'm sorry. All that singing. By the way, was the worship intense? Yeah. You know, one of the things I saw that when we had to take that break for COVID and all, but we got everybody back in the room. Everybody was so hungry to worship. And God just goes like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Ephesians 2. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one. And we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. For we are now co-seated as one with Christ. You know, this, this is a time when you got, okay, recalibrate. I am a kingdom citizen first. And I've been assigned to the earth and right now to this nation and to this state and in whatever position I've got. But my identity, right, my trajectory, my forever is here in the heavenly realm. And I've been co-seated with Christ. So I have to, again, get that elevation. And it's all the more important because this is kind of what it feels like. God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Selah. Selah means pause. Stop in the midst, the trembling and everything else, we will not fear. So the waters are already roaring. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. You're already <laughs> barely crossed over. It is just like, wow. Everybody was so anxious to get 2020 done with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> There may be days in this year you go, you know, those were the good old days. Back, back where we just stayed at home and ate bonbons and watched soap operas or something, you know? Okay. So my challenge in the midst of this is that we, though, have hit a pivot point in this country. We hit a massive pivot point. And I, I'm battling some depression, mainly under the feeling of, God, we failed you. We failed you. What did we not, what, what, you know, that was just the sense. I'm not saying that's actually what happened, but that's how it felt. You know, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn, I thought, Lord, did we not? Did we not? We don't know for sure, but I had that sense. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But we, meanwhile, God's up there like, I got this. <laughs> I got this. But now, have you got me? How are you going to be anchored? And therefore, now, what's going to shift and change? Everything has changed. Yes, everything has changed. Country club Christianity is officially dead. Okay. The time of it being comfortable in the culture to be a, a true follower of Jesus is gone. 
long as you're fine with praying in the name, you know, da 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 da, in the name of whatever da 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 da, a man and a woman. Sorry, <laughs> I heard a, a Jewish uh, political commentator just rip this guy. What on earth are you doing? It's from Hebrew. Amen. I mean, so be it. You know, <laughs> what are you doing anyway? Oh, you know, and because you know my heart, right? I'm glad we have more women in Congress. I think that's hopeful. <laughs> Come on. We need, in the image of God, he created them, male and female. But you don't get silly in, anyway. Okay. Pardon me? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and for those of you who, who, who are going through womanopause and... Hey, come on. If we're going to start doing this, we're going to, right? You know? Now, you know, I've been, I know that I am the bride of Christ. So if I can get over that gender issue, clearly. Right? Tell you, guys, it takes a while to get kind of accustomed. Just, okay. Yeah, okay. Now, the question is then how... What are the confrontations that are coming? What does it look like? And are there paradigms for us? And I don't know. God just led me to this in part because I, the prayer that they pray just felt like it was on target. So let's just, let's do this. This is an Acts 4, right? And it, this is following after they go up to the temple and they heal a guy, right? Silver and gold have I none, but that which I give you. I love the fact that the guy looked at him expecting money. <laughs> Go back and read that. He expected to give him, the, okay, here you go. No, I haven't got that. But what I have, I'm going to give you. Your life's going to just get completely rearranged, right? Well, that goes over really well with the people, not so much with leadership. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's look at this. The teaching and preaching of Peter and John angered the priests, the captain of the temple police, and the representatives of the Jewish sect of the Sadducees. They were furious that the people were being taught that in, that in Jesus there is a resurrection from the dead. I want to tell you, folks, <clears throat> the gospel is the gospel is the gospel, and it's still going to rackle a lot of people. Is that a word, rackle? It is now. <laughs> okay, yeah. It'll be out on the internet by tomorrow. Two million hits, rackle. Isn't that the name of a candy or a rock band or something? Rackle. Okay, anyway. This news is still disturbing. A resurrection from the dead means that there's something more. There's an accounting to it. And we don't like that. We're much happier being in very much in the context in which the church was born. All those plethora of gods, right? When the church was targeted because they were considered atheistic because they only believed in one God and not in all these others. Because as long as I got all these others, then who cares about yours? I can do whatever I want because I can find a God who will identify for me with what I need. Right? Okay. Culture is that way. So while Peter and John were still speaking, the Jewish authorities came to the temple courts to oppose them. They had them arrested, and since it was already evening, they kept them in custody until the next day. So, we're headed here, just so we're clear. I'm not doom and gloom, but country club Christianity is dead. And if you're going to stand for truth and you're going to say it, chances are somebody's going to try to arrest you. You know, we've been sitting here fat and happy for so long looking at other countries like China and Russia and Cuba and other places where they have just so endured in their faith and become brilliant for it, right, in the midst of that. And we've always looked, at, I've always looked over that and go, oh, God, bless them. I'm so glad I'm not there. Right? Come on. I mean, only Francis Chan is the one actually going into China to try, like, because he is so, it's like, Lord, you got to. Shift, shift. And then, of course, Peter answers to this. And he says, filled with the Holy Spirit, he answers, respected leader, elders and leaders of the people, listen. And he goes on and presents, right, the gospel. And he goes to talk about, if it's this guy, you're wondering how he got well, let me tell you. 
but he doesn't parse anything. He gets to this part. You crucified Jesus Christ of Nazareth, but God raised him from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that you, the builders, have rejected, and now he has become the cornerstone. There is no one else, say no one else, no one else. who has the power to save us, for there is only one name, say one name. one name, to whom God has given authority by which we must experience salvation, the name of Jesus. Unequivocal, right? This is just... <laughs> Sorry, the same congressman when before he finished the amen and a woman, we talked about, you know, the name of God that we know by many names and by many faiths. And it was just and the guy. I looked the guy up. He he's a Methodist minister, United Methodist. And I thought, okay. Um, and and I understand within the political environment, um, but guess what? Not an option for us. Because Jesus said, if you deny me before men, then I will deny you before my father. It's just that clear. I wish we could say it was just some soft everybody, you know, feel warm and fuzzy. Um, Jesus is like, yeah, I love you much. But there needs to be the relationship here. So, of course, when you answer like that, there's a power and there's the problem. The council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered that they were just ordinary men who never had religious training. I love that. <clears throat> what do we do? Yeah. Peter, Peter, the open mouth, insert foot, right? Boy, gets shifted come Pentecost. Then they began to understand the effect that Jesus had on them simply by spending time with him. Standing there with them was the healed man and there was nothing further they could say. Exhibit A. We're going to need a whole lot more Exhibits A. Otherwise, it's just a whole lot of talk. And everybody has plenty of talk. And even with Exhibit A, they many won't believe, right? Talks about Lazarus, that many were coming to believe, but because he had been raised to the dead, they, others made a plot to kill him. Well, let's get rid of Exhibit A, and B, and C, and D, right? Just how it goes. But God, right? You, we got to... <laughs> So they had them brought back before the council and they commanded them to never teach the people or speak again using the name of Jesus. Okay. <laughs> you can do, you can have a moment of silence. You can do this. You can just, you can pray to all the gods you want. Just don't use the name of Jesus. That's just amazing. But Peter and John replied, you can judge for yourselves. Is it better to listen to you or to God? It's impossible. Say impossible. impossible. For us to stop speaking about all the things we've seen and heard. It's just not about all the things that we learned in a theology class or in whatever else. It's what we've seen and heard, what we've experienced of the King, the true encounter of the risen Lord, the visions you've received, the healings you've received, the things you've seen him do the miracles, you know, your life transformed. We're supposed to be, that's our context. Since the members of the council couldn't come up with a crime they could punish them for, they threatened them once more and let them go. <clears throat> this one part will change. Um, because depending upon how much you're going to hold a biblical standard, there'll be a crime for that. Oh, you think gender is defined by God and marriage is sacred between a man and a woman? Oh, that's hate speak right there. Wait, that's a crime. It's just, but you guys, you, you got to, for many people, it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to go do my thing. This gets very personal for us, right? If, if you're, <laughs> you're in this position, there are people in other countries, including Canada and France, in my position, have been put into jail, for it. 
okay, hate crime. It's like, okay, there's no hate. <laughs> We're all messed up. <laughs> That's just, but God has set this up as, so we would understand how it works in the image of God. He created them male and female. And there's phenomenal strength and power and all that. There's wholeness. Anyway. Yeah. So, but then I love this. <clears throat> they head back to the church. When the believers heard their report, they raised their voices in unity and prayed, Lord Yahweh, you are the Lord of all. You created the universe, the earth, the sky, the sea, and everything that is in them. And you spoke by the Holy Spirit through your servant, David, our forefather, saying, how dare the nations plan a rebellion, ranting and raging against the Lord Most High. Their foolish plots are futile. Look at how the kings of the earth take their stand with the rulers scheming and conspiring together against God and his anointed Messiah. This was the, you know, just with all the stuff going on, this, I remembered this prayer that they went to. You know, they're very aware that this is not their fight. You get that? This is not their fight, but they have a role in it. The fight is with God and with his Messiah. The name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Question of when. Okay, I get that. That's why I love being in in some discussion with anybody, well, da, 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 and I believe this, this is like, okay, well, if you're right, I'll die. And I have this, this, and this, or I get reincarnated or whatever. If I'm right, which way you want to wager these things? I mean, I love logic. It's hard to get around that one, but they kept going. <clears throat> In fact, Herod and Pontius Pilate. Okay, here you've got then the religious, right? And you've got the governmental there, the Roman and the Jewish rulers in there. Along with the Jews and non-Jews met together to take their stand against your holy servant, Jesus the Messiah. They did to him all that your purpose and your will had determined according to the destiny you had marked out for him. So now, Lord, listen to their threats to harm us. <laughs> I want you to read this line together. So now, read this together. So now, Lord, listen to their threats to harm us. See, you, you got to get. We, you have been seated in there. So your prayer has got to be more engaged. Empower us as your servants to speak the word of God freely and courageously. Stretch out your hand of power through us to heal and to move in signs and wonders by the name of your holy son, Jesus. This is incredibly powerful. This is a model in the midst of the crazy. Now you're like, well, we're not there. That's not happening yet. Well, okay, just, 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 yeah. I mean, it's just... We have to start praying. That's right. You pray it now. You embrace it now. Because frankly, when it comes time and it's right in your face, there's not time. Okay? Trained for years in martial arts, right? And there's a lot of things we used to do called one-step sparring and stuff like this. But all of that begins to train your body to respond when you're actually in a conflict, in a fight. And that's why you actually then go in and, and go to tournaments and stuff like that, because you've got to get used to it. But if you haven't trained, <laughs> uh, just a minute, let me look that up in the manual. And God's answer. <clears throat> At that moment, the earth shook beneath them, causing the building they were in to tremble. Each one of them was filled with the Holy Spirit, and they proclaimed the word of God with unrestrained boldness. Anybody need that? Okay, I'm just telling you that happened in a house church, right? Like this. Well, maybe not quite like this. PowerPoints were difficult. The candles were always going out. And the hand puppets were kind of like, you know, it's all they had. 
But it's understanding who they are and said, Lord, how dare the nations, any nation, any government rise up? You are sovereign. You are Lord. You are the maker of heaven and earth. And we belong to you, right? He is the hero of this story. But we belong to him. And it's his fight. We're a part of it. Listen to the threats that you that they're making now, Lord, and give us boldness. And they asked that they would con he would confirm the message that they have with signs and wonders, right? And of course, you all know the story. The church just grew and grew and grew, and many people laid down their lives. And it was stunning because you had people that were singing as they were thrown into pits with fierce animals and stuff. You're like, how, I don't even, how do we, how do you get there? You get their understanding who you are and understanding how long this life is compared to what's coming. And if you don't, then you certainly don't choose to be part of that group. So <clears throat> part of this taking your stand in an upside down world, sometimes you have to go that it's like this, but it is really, really screwed up and around and I found this picture, sculpture up in Canada with a church turned over. <laughs> yeah. But see, the reality is, is that while we often will see that things are just turned all upside down, what's interesting is that the title, that statement about that kind of behavior is supposed to be ours because in Acts later on they drag some believers before a council and they say these who have turned the world upside down have come here too you see we're the ones whatever's getting turned upside down out there we're the ones are supposed to be turned so turned it upside down because the power of the word the demonstration of the love and um, I almost titled this thing. It's, I'm going to have to come back to it later. But when I was sending this out, I almost put a subtitle to it saying, Welcome to the Resistance. Because you are truly become a counterculture movement. Now, we were always supposed to be that. But a lot of compromise, a lot of stuff, we just got folded in, folded in, folded in. And... Therefore, you have a United Methodist pastor, congressman opening Congress with whatever that was. Well, I mean, I'm sure it was heartfelt. I just think it's, it's missing. I mean, don't even say amen. Say so be it. If that amen word, then okay. Like I said, that's Hebrew. Amen. <laughs> don't use the Hebrew. Just say so be it. But I want to encourage you to... <clears throat> the need for, you're like, well, how could I be that way? Well, I love the hall of fame of faith. There's not enough time to tell you of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. I love that Samson for how screwed up he was, how selfish, how self-centered. He only prayed two prayers and they were completely all about him, Right. Even at the end, he said, God, help me revenge my eyes. It's only he just wanted to get back. It's like, okay. But there he is. But the rest of this gives better indication. <clears throat> Through faith's power, they conquered kingdoms and established true justice. Their faith fastened onto their promises and pulled them into reality. That's a key phrase. Their faith fastened onto their promises and pulled them into reality. It was faith that shut the mouth of lions, put out the power of raging fire, and caused many to escape certain death by the sword. In their weakness, their faith imparted power to make them strong. Faith sparked courage within them, and they became mighty warriors in battle, pulling armies from another realm into battle array. You get that heavenly mindset. Because see, most of the time, whatever you think Samson looks like, this is kind of how we look. 
It's okay. In their weakness, their faith imparted power to make them strong. Faith sparked courage within them, and they became mighty warriors. Yeah? I wish I had a mirror slide here. Okay. I mean, the testimonies that need to come from this gathered group of people and those that are online, this little thing that God's doing. But it only takes one or two to go out there and just start a whole new thing. Whole new thing. That's why, you know, we're always anxious. We're always asking you, make sure you're still supposed to be coming here. We, we love to see you. We want to strengthen you. But if God's got another assignment, we want to be the first ones to bless you and send you. And it may be absolutely nothing that I feel like personally I'm supposed to do, but that's not about me. It's you and God and what he says, right? So last week I hit on a couple of these. <clears throat> In the year 2021, it was kind of interesting. God led me to three key verses. I'm just going to touch on these. So the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. I'm going to be coming back to these verses throughout because it just felt like a prophetic trigger. In this time, the question of staying down in the valley where the people are all afraid and where you look at things from the valley's perspective, and yet God's saying, I need you to come up into the thick darkness where I am, where the air is rare and it's dangerous up here because I am here. And this, Jesus said to them in John 20, 21, said to them again, peace to you as the father has sent me, I also send you. I touched on this, but let me just, because <clears throat> this is key. Peace unto you. The word for peace, right, is shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Now, this is the second time when he meets him, if those of you went back and read the context. Some commentators will even say the first time he says it to you, peace to you, it's sort of like, hey, hi. It's just a greeting, hello. But the second time, there's something more going on here, right? And the Greek is one word, but in the Hebrew or the Aramaic, the shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. And then two other places when he, he hits on peace. <clears throat> John 14. I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. It's a passion translation of that, right? My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. And then this is in John 16. Everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you, what? Rest. Rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous for I've conquered the world. <clears throat> and then interestingly, remember I mentioned Daniel 10? Part of the conversation that goes on because Daniel is so freaked out is this. <clears throat> Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So in this conversation, linked to that number 21, in this 21st year of this millennia, again, there's that word, peace be to you. There's a strength that comes that we have to be anchored in or otherwise we will get jerked around by all that stuff. <clears throat> Can you make sense of this picture? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually holding a lens through which, you know, a lens will always flip things around the other way. Well, I found this an intriguing picture because she's upside down, but her eyes right. I thought, you know what? That's kind of like how we have to be. It may seem like you're a little bit upside down, screwed around. I don't see enough heads nodding. <laughs> we know who you are. <laughs> that would be all of us, right? You new guys get a pass, but you know, I'm sure the fact you showed up and you know Shelly probably is indicated. So some other things. So yes, things are indeed upside down, but we are to have clear vision when we abide in the shalom of Jesus, 
And the question is, will the world recognize that we have been with him? You know, they didn't have to get on some big, long discussion. They presented and they sat and they stood there and the world went, oh, wow, something different. And will we be that we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard? So the more you see and hear of him, just speak of that if you have to. You don't have to get into a debate about whatever. Let me introduce you to my best friend. Let me introduce you to the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I hang out with them every morning. It's amazing. They're different. The Father has set his heart in me, and my mind is bound to the mind of Yeshua, Jesus. And the Spirit dwells in me. How does that work? You know, I can explain certain things to you. I don't know, or I can describe them. I don't know I can explain it to you. And then will we pray as they prayed in there? That is a model. And by the way, when we do earthquake to follow. Taking your stand in an upside down world. Does this make sense? Yes, sir. We have to stay recalibrated, folks. This ain't over. It ain't over. There's more crazy still to come. <clears throat> Primary alignment with Chuck got this word almost two years ago when God said it, the crazy would continue, wouldn't be resolved till the 18th of January. Okay. What's interesting is next week we'll do first fruits for the new month. The inauguration is actually going to take place in the 11th biblical month. There's all sorts of interesting overlaps for that. Okay. I just pay attention to these things, right? Because God is faithful. If we're seeking his heart, we go to his word, he does speak. So any of you need your perspective shifted, your vision shifted. Yeah. Okay. Father, right now, you know the craziness that's going on. You understand the way the enemy's trying to slight and snip away and push Jesus, the real Jesus out of the conversation and out of the church and out of the culture. And we just say, nah, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Jesus, thank you that you sit at the right hand of the Father. You live to daily make intercession for us, that we have been seated, co-seated with you. We don't even fully understand that, but it's true. Help us to stand in that authority, to see as you see, and so to pray and to declare from that perspective. Lord, help us align for what's coming, what's already here, and take joy, joy at being recognized as those who spent time with Jesus. Break off all fear now, Father. We take authority over any spirit of fear, of man, of persecution, of prosecution, and fill them with fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.